She had been a friend and companion such as few possessed. Intelligent, gentle, knowing all the ways of the family, interested in all its concerns, and peculiarly interested in Emma, in all her pleasures and schemes. How was she to bear the change? It was true that her friend was going to live only half a mile from them at Randall's, but Emma was aware that she was now in great danger of suffering from intellectual solitude. She dearly loved her father, and though he had a most amiable temper, he was no companion for her. He could not meet her in conversation, rational or playful. The evil of the actual disparity in their ages, and Mr. Woodhouse had not married early, was much increased by his constitution and habits, for he was a much older man in ways than in years. Nor could Emma take comfort in her sister's company, for Isabella, though but little removed by matrimony in London, was much beyond her daily reach. Emma had many acquaintance in Highbury, the large and populous village to which Hartfield belonged, but not one among them could be accepted in lieu of Miss Taylor for even half a day. It was a melancholy change, deeply felt by Emma, who was left to contemplate in the company of her dispirited father. Mr. Woodhouse was a nervous man, easily depressed, fond of everybody that he was used to, and hating to part with them, hating change of every kind. Matrimony, as the origin of change, was always disagreeable, and he was by no means yet reconciled to his own daughter's marrying. As to Miss Taylor's marriage, he could not but help voicing the fresh pain he felt each and every time he remembered the wedding. Poor Miss Taylor. I wish she were here again. What a pity it is that Mr. Weston ever thought of her. I cannot agree with you, Papa. You know I cannot. Mr. Weston is an excellent man. And you would not have had Miss Taylor live with us forever and bear all my odd humours when she might have a house of her own. A house of her own? Where is the advantage in that, when Hartfield is three times as large? And you never have any odd humours, my dear. You are like your sister in that regard. Oh, poor Isabella, so far off. She is only 16 miles off, Papa. She is perfectly within reach and we shall be always meeting the Westons at Randalls or Hartfield. We must begin. We must go and pay our wedding visit very soon. You are right, my dear. There is some small comfort in that, and we must seek consolation where we can. Emma spared no exertions to maintain this happier flow of ideas while awaiting Mr Knightley, whom she expected every moment. Mr Knightley was a sensible man, about seven or eight and thirty, a very old and intimate friend of the family and the elder brother of Isabella's husband, John Knightley. He lived about a mile from Highbury, was a frequent visitor and always welcome, despite the fact that he was one of the few people who could see faults in Emma Woodhouse and the only one who ever told her of them. His cheerful manner always did Mr. Woodhouse good and had a happy effect upon his entering the room this evening, even if the topic at first remained unchanged. Mr. Knightley, it is very kind of you to call upon us. Do not you think the wedding a sad business? Poor Miss Taylor. Poor Mr. and Miss Woodhouse, if you please, but I cannot possibly say... Poor Miss Taylor. I have a great regard for you and Emma, but it must be better for Miss Taylor to have only one person to please instead of two. Especially when one of those two is such a fanciful, troublesome creature. That is what you have in your head, I know, and what you would certainly say if my father were not by. I believe it is very true, my dear, indeed. I am afraid I am sometimes very fanciful and troublesome. My dearest papa... You do not think I could mean you, or suppose Mr Knightley to mean you. What a horrible idea. I meant only myself. Mr Knightley loves to find fault with me, you know. In a joke. It is all a joke. We always say what we like to one another. Emma knows I never flatter her, but I meant no slight to anybody. I only meant that Miss Taylor has been used to having two persons to please. She will now have but one, which can only bring her ease. I shall still call her poor Miss Taylor for being taken from Hartfield where she was...